as it's not too long until we got the fresh rerun of the Funeral Parlor Director, and she's one of my most played characters, I thought now would be a good time to do my first in-depth character review. If you like longer videos like this, let me know in the comments who you'd like a build for, what topics to cover. I have plenty of 30 second long build guides and tips, but there's so much to unpack with Udao, I thought I would do a video to show all she has to offer. Now let's dive right into this with an intro. Hu Tao is a top DPS, and by that I mean well built, she can hit around 100,000 damage every single charge attack she does. She can do that a hell of a lot. Her single target damage over a long period of time is arguably unparalleled within the current game, and that's one of the many reasons she's put at rank 2 in a lot of evaluations of top DPS. Not only that, but when comparing with other characters like Eula, who does well at C0, but explodes into insane damage at C6, Hu Tao can reach those incredibly high numbers at C0, and I'll explain all the benefits of those constellations later. First of all, let's get into her skills. Attacks. Attacks first. Overall, her attacks are a little on the low side, but she does have a 6 attack combo, keep in mind, versus the 5 combo of most 4 star characters. But when looking at charge attacks, she has one of the highest multipliers. This is because her kit is very much designed around those charge attacks. Her C1 unlocking the playstyle to constantly abuse them until she can stuff an enemy in a coffin. Something important to note about the charge attack is that it has a 0.5 second ICD or internal cooldown, which is true for all polearm users. While this means that it can proc a reaction every single time, as you can't charge attack enough to beat that cooldown. This means every single charge attack can melt or vaporize, therefore multiplying that damage by at least 1.5. Even so, this charge attack damage is still not much until we consider the amplification from her character defining skill, Guide to the Afterlife. This shows Death's Door not only in name, but to Hu Tao and the enemies. This comes in two parts. Part 1 is Parameter Papilio. By sacrificing 30% of her HP, not max, rounding up, she somehow gains a massive monumental multiplication to attack based upon her max HP. This affects her base attack, meaning that having a high base attack from her weapon and a high level is fairly significant. The great thing is you can still be on 1 HP and use your skill, and you'll remain at 1 HP, as this 30% rule is consistent throughout all of her talent levels. Alongside the damage increase, your weapon damage is converted to pyro damage and can't be overridden by anything like Chong Yun's skill. And this allows you to apply blood blossoms on your charge attacks, and lastly you gain resistance to interruption. The crazy thing about this skill is how much it increases your attack. I can be sitting on 1500 attack and it goes all the way up to 4 or 5000. So blood blossoms are the second part of this skill, and they apply pyro damage every 4 seconds to an enemy that was affected by it, and it lasts for 8 seconds. So they apply twice. The timer can be reset by Hu Tao charging through the enemy again, and in fact doing so will completely reset the timer meaning that if you keep charging through the same enemy, the damage will be delayed. Against multiple enemies, this can be a little infuriating as it can consume potential reactions. The duration of the skill is 9 seconds and has a 16 second cooldown, which means to be as efficient as possible, you have 7 seconds, which is a nice amount of time, to rotate around those characters, generate particles, use bursts, or even your own burst. In fact, let's talk about that, your own burst. Now, <laughs> once you've killed them, stuff them into a coffin, charge them for buying the most expensive coffin, you have to give them a nice soothing serum ceremony to keep those Karen spirits down. Not only do you provide a large burst, but you also regenerate some of your own HP. To get the most out of this skill for damage and healing, you need to be below 50% max HP on activation of your burst. A common misconception I see with Hu Tao players is that they think the lower their health, the more damage they'll do. That's not true. You only need to be underneath that 50% HP marker. The nice benefit is this, is that with an expected 30k HP, you'll still be sitting at a 15k and be doing max damage, which is only slightly below that of a normal DPS, and it costs 60, so it's not cheap or expensive. This is one of the reasons why it's important not to heal Hu Tao too much, because it does around 30% more damage on low HP. As a last note to her skills, the burst does more damage the more enemies it hits. This makes it wonderful against pesky enemies like Sissin Mages, because all those worthy little pesky flies become a nice fried snack. As far as leveling priority goes, Auto attacks go slightly ahead of the skill and then the burst. This is because most of her damage comes from her attacks. The main bonus of the skill is to increase that attack and imbue it with pyro, but the amount it increases by 
Honestly, you kind of want to get both of those skills to 9 as quickly as possible. This is all enhanced further when we look at her combat passives. Firstly, Flutterby. This provides 12% crit to your other characters when the pirate imbument of your weapon ends for 8 seconds. This is the perfect amount of time to rotate through them and get back to Hu Tao just in time to activate her skill again. Her second skill increases pirate damage by 33% when under that 50% HP, which means it's not only useful to be below that HP for your burst, but during your skill too and you get all of this wonderful stuff without any constellations. Now on to constellations. I'm sure the number one question many of you have is C1 or Homer and I'll put a marker in the description for that if you want to jump to it but I need to cover Homer so we'll go through that after weapons. But talking about C1 it's probably the most useful skill as Hu Tao is really built around charge decks. It removes the stamina consumption of those charge attacks not only allowing you to dash for those iframes while attacking but secondly you can cancel your animations for even more damage using jumps and dashes. Hu Tao has a very, very long tail end to her charge attack, so cancelling those allows you to do a lot more damage with your rotations. I'll touch on C2 and C3 for the possibility that people are going for them on reruns. C2 is a little bit misleading. While it appears to apply plenty of effects, the increase to damage of the Blood Blossoms is very minor. The main bonus being that when you're rotating through your other characters such as Jin Cho, you're more likely to get reactions on them before switching back to Hu Tao. And for Hu Tao herself though, it only adds about 2-3% damage. And C3 adds around 10%. I would say that C1 is the most significant by far. If you're going to be on C3, then you're probably wailing to C6 anyway, as C4 itself adds zero damage to Hu Tao. Now, weapons. The winged staff of Homer is 100% the best weapon that you could ever get to go along with Hu Tao, by a significant way. Not only does she benefit immensely from the HP scaling, and it being the only polearm that has crit damage on it, but on top of that, the ability also depends on the character being below 50% HP, which is all over her kit. There really isn't a better designed weapon for her, nor I doubt there ever will be. As a note, the weapon is also good right now as it's the best for Zhongli and one of the best for Zhao, as the damage under 50% HP is just ginormous. As 4 stars go, I'd have to recommend Dragon's Bane and Deathmatch, as Deathmatch provides that very much needed crit stat. Dragon's Bane increases damage against opponents affected by Hydro and Pyro, which works really well with one of her best writer buddies, Jin Cho. We'll touch more on her potential clients later. Now, onto the big question, Homer versus C1. As it's a rerun, a lot of people are probably considering going for some of these, or even maybe it's your first time and you want to know which is better, because you've been saving for Hu Tao for a while. Now let's go over this topic and this very useful infographic from the Hu Tao Corner Discord server. So here we can see the number comparison between C1 with her best weapons versus C0 with Homer. As you can see in the center here, comparing C1 with R1 weapons versus Homer is basically the same kind of damage, but that's with a lot of assumptions. I've heard from many who tell mates that they feel her gameplay is a little bit clunky without that C1 to smooth out always being able to use your charge attack and giving you that extra invulnerability from being able to dash and reposition much more easily. To match those numbers, you are required to be using those dashes and the extra stamina to cancel your animations efficiently. We'll talk about specific rotations later, but it's very important to note that the tail end of her charge attack animation is very, very long. So at the cost of a little bit of stamina, you can jump or dash at the end of the animation to get a charge attack off much more often. Whereas Homer requires no gameplay changes and most of all can be used on other characters. On top of that, we have the fact that the guarantee to take Homer takes many more pulls than guaranteeing a C1. You're pulling on the weapon banner, which won't give you many characters, and if you lose a 50-50, you're getting a 5-star weapon, not a 5-star character. Both have their pros and cons, and what I'd say it boils down to is how much you enjoy Hu Tao or plan to play her. If Hu Tao is your one and only DPS lady and you expect to use her continuously for the foreseeable future, C1 is the way to go, and if not, then Homer. But really, absolutely don't need either of them to do a lot of damage. To addendum this, both are focused around DPS and not utility. As the game goes on, you've all seen how some characters, specifically DPSs, are stronger than others. When the game first came out, Deluke was the king of the field, but now, Hu Tao, Zhao, Ganyu, Ayaka, Yula all push him aside and likely in the future we'll get more characters and weapons that push Hu Tao and Staff of Homer aside for higher DPS. Without buffing old characters which Mihoyo has shown no intention of doing, power creep will happen. This means while these bonuses keep them relevant for longer, it will deteriorate over time, albeit maybe at the same rate as Zhongli's memories. Now for artifacts. Late game, 
With Tutal, there's two main problems to assess. The first being something that isn't addressed in all the guides, Shimanawa's versus Crimson Witch. From mine and other people's testing with similar stats, the overall assessment is that damage-wise, they're fairly similar. The trade-off is a little bit like C1 and Homer, as Shimanawa's is a lot less forgiving. Ideally, Shimanawa's, you rarely use your burst as you're consuming the energy for the artifact set. Not only does that sacrifice those big damage per screenshot numbers, a little AoE, and you're only self-sustained, but most notably perhaps your invulnerability moments that are provided to you through using your burst animation. A significant example of this is when fighting the Maku Kenki for dodging their high damage attack. But if you can afford that, especially with C1, you get many more charge attacks off and it does start to pull ahead in damage. The last point is maybe that the domain that you get Shimanawas from is much more friendly than Crimson Witch. Not only do you need specific characters to do well in it, but you can use the emblem set on a good 50% of supports out there including some of Hu Tao's best supports, Rosario Jinchu. Whereas Love Walker, I've only seen on what, like a child meme build? I don't even know if that's a meme or that's a real thing. Not only that, but the Shimanawa's pieces that don't work on Hu Tao can work on other characters, as that plus 18% attack buff is kind of universally useful. So personally, I like using Crimson Witch, but it's whatever has the best substats. And if you haven't started farming for them yet, then maybe Shimanawa's is the way to go. Now onto the second discussion point with Hu Tao. Hu Tao needs a wide variety of stats to do well, meaning that it's easy to build her mediocrely, but hard to build her well. Crit damage, crit rate, attack percent, HP percent, EM are all significantly important and even a little ER is generally recommended. This is the order of priority. Get around 120% energy recharge, then start shooting for crit. A good stats are 70 to 220 when using Staff of Homer, but anything from 70 to 140 is a good point to aim for, as the closer you get to that 1 to 2 ratio, the better it is. Then there's a balance between HP and Elemental Mastery, as you can run both on your sands. If you're going Elemental Mastery, an easy estimation is you want your HP to be about 100 times your Elemental Mastery. So you've got 270 Elemental Mastery, so you want about 27,000 HP. 220 EM to 22k HP, but the higher the better. If you're going for HP sands, then you probably still want around 100 elemental mastery from those substats, and you're aiming to get about 30,000 health. Obviously, this was with Hu Tao at level 90, her weapon at level 90. Staff of Homer definitely makes it easier to hit those high numbers, but just the higher the better. An attack sands can be used if it has great substats, and you want to be looking for it in the substats of all your other artifacts. To touch on the other artifacts, as always, you want that pyro goblet, and your circlet should be crit damage or crit rate. And other sets you could throw in there would be Wanderers, Tenacity of the Millilith, Noblesse Oblige, but only if they have really crazy substats when comparing with your other artifacts. For early game, as I always say, main stats should be the priority over the artifact set, as you shouldn't really be farming until AR45, because your resin is worth three times as much in level 90 dungeons versus level 80 dungeons but if you want recommendations try martial artist resolution of sojourner and of course for some reason if you're not using reactions for example to geo to pyro then elemental mastery and crimson witch can go out the window but reactions are highly recommended it's the kind of the best way to get high damage in the game right now. Now, at long last we've been over everything, we can talk a little bit about her playstyle. As you might have guessed, Hu Tao really excels with one or two targets. Two targets specifically when you can hit both of them with a charge attack, because that's the strongest point. This makes her much more difficult to use against multiple small enemies. As you have to expend that stamina, dashing around to get to those other enemies, only not to have enough stamina to charge through them, and on top of that, sometimes your charges take you into inconsistent directions and knock enemies further away but really when you sit down use your skill and you can charge like a train through the kid who likes trains until they're demolished hoping to take a little damage along the way pacing your healing around your health and using your burst when you need that hp or at the end of a rotation you just do crazy damage the funnest enemies to fight as Hu Tao are ruined guards because you can run up to them and keep charging through them over and over and you won't pass through them so you never have to worry about moving and you constantly get those charge attacks for massive damage. Okay now let's quickly cover her rotations. The best damage is to do a normal attack as every charge attack must be preempted by a normal attack, charge attack and then dashing or to save more energy you can jump. This is what makes C1 so good as you can maintain this combo for longer. If you can't handle this, then try stepping it down so you do two or three attacks first before your charge attack and then cancelling it with a jump or a dash. That's about it. It's not very complex for Hu Tao because she's just focused around the single skill. So we'll do some comparisons with other characters. As far as pyro DPSs go, there's no one close to her. Yo Mia, Diluc, 
Kli, Zhang Ling, all were potential opponents to each other, but not to Hu Tao. Her scaling is just too crazy, and there's a reason she's part of the big three. Talking of Li Yue's big three, she slips in a solid second overall for me. Ganyu just has too much damage height and ceiling to compete with her, but Xiao's biggest weakness is that he's all built around multi-target, and you're often only wanting to hit one character in the game. The bigger endgame bosses like the Magu Kenki only a single character, so Hu Tao slides ahead there, on top of the Melt and the Vape meta, meaning those characters can implicitly hit bigger damage numbers from reactions. Now let's touch on the teammates, I'll briefly go over some. Hu Tao is greedy and demands a lot of field time to do the most damage, so the support should be characters you can quickly swap to, use a skill, get some energy back, and then use their burst before swapping back around to Hu Tao. Hu Tao works well with protection from Zhongli as she's most likely going to be hovering at a low HP, and that shield makes you goddamn invulnerable. While Toma has the possibility of fitting into this role, I'm a little worried that he'll end up stealing some of the reactions from Hu Tao, reducing her damage. For reactions currently, Jin Cho is ideal as he can help you vaporize on basically every charge attack while his burst is active, making sure that all the damage is multiplied by at least 1.5. Rosaria, Mona, Kikomi, Diona, hell even Child or Ganyu can swap into those teams to help you proc more reactions. You can run Bennett for the healing and the pyro synergy, especially at C6, though honestly because you can get around 4 to 5 thousand attack using Hutao's skill, Bennett's bonus makes a much smaller difference, and you'll probably need to build him to heal less as well as you don't want Hutao's health currently being above 50%. As mentioned earlier, because Hutao struggles when there's lots of smaller enemies, a character with a lot of crowd control can really help her out, whether it's Venti, Sucrose, or Kazuha, as it'll allow you to charge through multiple enemies at once. On top of this, Kazuha and Sucrose also buff up Elemental Mastery a little bit. While it may appear that Venti holds them up too high, as you dash underneath, you often catch a few of them as they bob down. To further this, these Animo characters can swell Hydra or Cry, allowing you to get those more consistent reactions, and they don't take up much field time. I do not recommend Electra as a pairing with her, especially at C0, because the knockback from Overload just means more stamina chasing enemies around and less stamina for charges. Lastly, you might have seen some speed runs using Ayaka's burst into Hu Tao's burst, as Ayaka will not only apply cryo, but massively reduce the enemy's resistances. That can be an effective combo, but both of them require a lot of field time, so it's up to you. And really, that should be everything. I hope you enjoyed this. This was very much more in-depth than stuff that I normally do. If you want me to make more things like this, well, let me know in the comments and subscribe. This is only a small channel, so any support means a lot of growth. Oh, and I also stream every day on Twitch. If you're interested, you can stop by, ask questions, or just, you know, just hang out. Lastly, for the plugs, there's Twitter, and I make short videos and tips all the time on YouTube and TikTok if you also like that. Either way, best of luck with your roles for Hu Tao, and I'll see you around, traveler. Bye-bye.